Hey guys. Yes, I'm in my car, doing my makeup right now. I'm getting ready for my very exciting day. I just made it back to Ohio this morning after spending the last couple of days in Indiana with my friend Liza Locks. It was such a fun couple of days. I did her hair. We lived through a tornado randomly. And I just kind of had some time to like chill out and catch my breath. I had kind of a stressful first week on the road just kind of getting into my groove. And so yeah, I feel refreshed back in Ohio. I'm currently at John Bryant State Park where I'm going to camp tonight and I am heading to Yellow Springs, Ohio in just a few minutes where I'm going to meet up with Ezra of Wild Hair Dreadlocks. I'm very excited. Ezra and I have known each other online for a while now, but this is going to be our first time meeting in person. Uh, sorry. Makeup's done. Need a quick snap. Let's go meet Ezra. My name is Liz and I'm a dreadlock artist from New Hampshire. One of the things I'm passionate about is building a stronger dreadlock community. So this spring, I randomly decided to hit the road for a couple of weeks and just connect with a bunch of other dreadlock artists. I filmed it all and now I'm here to share their stories with you. Here it's amazing. is freaking adorable. Knock knock. Oh my god. How are you? Thank Welcome. You. Welcome to Yale Springs. Thank you. Oh my god, it's so cute. All right. All right so my name is Ezra Stinson and I am the owner, co-owner of Wild Hair Dreadlocks and we are in Yellow Springs, Ohio. I really started back in the day, um, kind of before it was cool. The first set of dreads I did, I literally like used a fork. Um, I know that's crazy, but that's what we were doing back at that time and there wasn't much information out there. We're talking, you know, 10, 15 years ago. And the reason I say 10 to 15 is because the first five was like no man's land. I, for a long time, was self-taught until I could find some private teachers and some private apprenticeships, but I've done a lot of self-study, and I, everyone I would meet, I was like, show me what you're doing, let me see. Um, YouTube was really helpful. I really started because I wanted dreads on myself, so I had like the most horrendous partial of all time um, in high school, and I was the only person I had ever known that was doing that. I really was only doing dreads on a lot of my friends back in the day. In the festival circuit, um, I did a lot of like traveling with my husband's band and I was doing art full time. And friends were always like, will you do my dreads? Cause they saw that I had them. And it was always something I did on the side. Like it was never, like I would have a regular job and then I would do dreads after work. You know what I mean? And there was a tipping point when I realized I was like doing dreads at my job you know, during like little breaks or on my lunch break or whatever, I was making dreads and I was like, this is silly. I should just do this. Um, and I would say that, that, that 10 year mark is a kind of where that started. And I realized, wow, like people really, really value this and they really like it and it's different and I could do this full time. And so from that point I started phasing out the other work I was doing and doing dreads like more full time. And it was about like, I want to say, six or seven years ago that I realized I was starting to get like overrun because people were so excited. And that's when I brought my husband in and trained him. And I keep having that experience of finding that dreads are becoming more and more normalized and there are more and more people that want them. So every time we get that wave, I've created an opportunity for an apprentice and brought on an employee. And it's just kind of, it's kind of evolved and moved into this very big thing that we do every day. And now we're actually team-based, which is really cool. So a lot of locticians I see work by themselves, which is cool, it sounds really peaceful, but here we do teams. So we have like an install team, and we have a maintenance team. We run four chairs total. Um, in the coming years I may go to like six, but that sounds crazy. But that way we're allowed to be like really detail-oriented. 
We spend a lot of time with our clients. We're relationship based. So our community and our relationship with our clients is super intimate. Um, and we have like a little family here. So it's different than other shops and studios I've seen, but it really works for us. Um, and it's been a long time getting to this point. Like I said, I was really in the trenches by myself for years. I mean, a set of dreads when I started would have taken me like a freaking week. And now we're busting that out in two or three hours. So it's all about incremental growth and you know, learn, never stop learning, never stop changing what you're doing. I'm always getting inspired by other people in the community being like, wow, we should try that, you know? And sometimes we end up adopting something new. There's so much happening in the community that is so cool to witness. Um, so it's a, it's a cool, I always say, like to my employees when I bring on my apprentices, this is a really cool time in Dread history to be a part of this community. It's very special, so. All right, well, that was awesome. Can we do a tour now? I've been waiting for yes, this. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> Guys, this place is wild. The name is perfectly fitting. It definitely just makes you want to get out your wallet and go shopping. Everything? Or do you want me to just like be like categories? There's so much to look yeah. at in here. I'm so excited for this tour. You show me whatever you want to show me. I, okay. I feel like it'll take us three days to go through everything. So bring me around. I want to see. But yeah, you can cherry pick what we you talk have about. We have a lot. <laughs> we have so much stuff. Over here, it's we amazing. have like okay. our merch, like our wild hair, like merch. We have like cups and mugs, um, hoodies, t-shirts, all that. Clothing, wraps, accessories. Local makers, local makers, tea, jewelry, art, everything you can imagine. That's um, insane. We love to pile stuff on this wall, all of our fun like wraps and stuff. Mm -hmm. And like like all this year, like some of it's mine and some of it's other makers. Some of yeah. it's like my apprentices make it like we have like maker days where we all get together and create stuff together and put out and what else? Beads, cuffs, shoes. Um, this is my artwork. I just like to have Oh, that's space. yours. I'm always, yeah, I'm always making art. It's Don't amazing. zoom in. <laughs> I sell some art here, but I do bigger shows elsewhere. But I like to keep a rotating collection here. This is one of our stations. Ryan works here at the station a lot. We put him in what we call like the boy room. <laughs> the boy <laughs> room? <laughs> but yeah, he does a lot of his maintenance work here. I gotta get you in your swing. <laughs> this is Ryan. He's not often in the camera, but he works with us every day. He does most of our maintenance. Maintenance king. You work in the boy room, I yeah, take it. Okay, room, yeah. okay, got it. <laughs> and there's one more family member here, right? Yeah, Should we introduce her? Like, yeah, she actually homeschools here at the shop with us, which is really cool during work. Can you say hi? Do you want to be on YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> How old are you? Eight. Eight? Can I see your dreadlocks? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, so pretty. Do you love them? Mm -hmm. You're like a dreadlock princess. Okay, let's get back to the tour. We have hats, and I just did this lovely toggle display. Feel free to take inspiration from this because I just grabbed oh, the log. Oh, that's so Because toggles are hard to display, you know? Yes, that's so, brilliant. Like, so know? simple and yeah. should have been so obvious, but wasn't. Yeah, we have tons of makers that do jewelry. Um, what else? So this is our second room where I kind of work most of the time. Wait, so I know you yeah. had expanded. So what was the original room? There was this a wall room? Here. So, so this, this was your room. original space, we had and two then in here in the beginning, one, two, three. It was totally wow. Set up. So and yeah, you definitely expanded your amount of retail. And we're hoping to take over the downstairs. Cool. Fingers crossed. We'll see what happens. So this is our second room. This is where I have most of my fun. We have more retail in here, but there's three stations packed into this big room. The girl room. The girl room. This is the girl room. I like to show off like um, my taxidermy pieces. Those are super fun. I do all that. Um, we have so much filler. <laughs> we have so much. So that's what we keep in this room. I like to keep it. Filler, home. she's talking yeah. about this. I feel like not everyone knows that that's what that's it's right, called, yeah. but like the extra added extension pieces. Mm -hmm. What else? More local makers, clothes. All kinds of jewelry, headbands, beads. This is where we keep all of our like dread care stuff. 
I haven't told anyone, but we're about to come out with our own line as well. That's coming in like Ooh. two months, so hopefully. This is another one of our maintenance stations. We kind of have two of those. My gals work here because a lot of times like I'll pop back and forth between. So I'll be doing something here and then I'll go set up something for them there and then come back. But this is my station. Lots of room. You get the, the pretty, pretty planty, yeah. very nice yeah. light station. Yeah. <laughs> the queen so bee I'll station. Here. <laughs> yes, we were there. And, but you know, we work as a team, so like really yeah. no one's like stuck at their spot. Like we're all moving around all the time, you know. Yeah. Um, we call it musical chairs every day. Will you tell about the plant situation? Because I think that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, so we have great light in here. My friend Emily, who owns Mora, she actually cares for our plants in return for retailing her plants here. So usually when you get your dreads done, you can leave with a little plant. It brings the vibe up, having plants. We love that. Cool. And then we have our fancy photo wall. Yeah. All our magic. Yeah, that that's is cool. about it. More filler, more filler, more filler, more filler everywhere and yeah and we move stuff around all the time nothing ever stays the same we always have new i had two new retailers come in yesterday and drop off their stuff so yeah. uh, my friend yaro negro she's a local she does taxidermy jewelry so she does stuff with real bones and like real bugs and real teeth and everything i love her work it's incredible i make a lot of bone jewelry cool i do a lot of that my brother makes these the moon daggers you see. Oh yeah, in the hair. Yeah. He does those. Dread rings, candles, oils, clothes. So much stuff. Yeah. So much Dread stuff. Dread scrolls. <laughs> makes these. You know, you see these everywhere. Yeah. Dread quilts. Those are super popular. My friend Liz does Varg Parla. She's incredible. She spends so much time. You know what I mean? Like, I'm really proud and really giddy about all of our makers, you know? Yeah. I'm, like, really excited. Like, they'll show me, like, what they make, and I'm like, dude, this is awesome. You've got a great eye because everything here is beautiful and really unique. They'll be like, I made this for myself, and I'm like, okay, make me 25 <laughs> more, and let's go. You know? Do you have a lot of people that walk in just to kind of, like, shop for retail, oh, or yeah. do you... That's a good point. So... What's crazy about our retail selection here is that it's just for my clients. They're actually not open to the public at all. So this is all just for my dread peeps. Maybe someday I'll change that and I'll be open to the public. Yeah, like what if you got the downstairs, would you kind of? I probably would do that Yeah. if I had that, but then I'd have someone managing that. And we're busy with dread work. Like, I'm kind of yeah. weird. Like, I don't even let people bring like support people, which some people don't like, but it's that person's time. Yeah. And so we're really all about that intimate connection time with that person that's their safe space. You don't need to be in here bombarded with people shopping. Like I brought it here for you. So yeah. I feel so special that I got a private yeah. tour. All right, Ezra. <laughs> Thank you so, so yeah. much for sharing your Thank story you. and showing me your space. All right, bye. Bye. <laughs> so lame. <laughs> okay, bye. Sorry guys, didn't mean to end that so abruptly. I think my head was absolutely spinning after that tour. I've really enjoyed hanging out with Ezra, but I still have more places to go, things to do, and people to meet on my road trip, so off I went. And last but not least, thank you to each of you who have donated something towards this trip and towards making all of these videos possible. I'm so grateful for you guys.